This is Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum. This is a very different Dr. Seuss book because, well, here's what it's about. Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum is based on a manuscript and sketches by the beloved Dr. Seuss, also known as Ted Geisel. Illustrator Andrew Joyner studied the sketches and created illustrations that pay homage to Zeus's line, character, and artistic energy while being uniquely his own. So the story is taken from things that Dr. Seuss wrote and his sketches, but it is a very nice introduction to art as well. So parents, if you want to talk to your children about art, this is a great book to get. Art, what is it all about? This is what art is about. Art is when an artist looks at something, like a horse for instance, and they see something in that horse that excites them, so they do something about it. They tell you about it in any number of ways. Artists have been excited by horses for as long as there have been artists. But what an artist tells us about horses and how they tell us is different from every artist. What an artist sees in a horse depends on many different things. Their background, likes and dislikes, you name it. So, come with me. Let's look at how different artists have seen horses. Maybe we can find some new ways of looking at them ourselves. Look it over, think it over, talk it over. When most people look at me, they just see me like this. But when an artist looks at me, they see a million other things. Can you? Some artists look at a horse and see its outlines. For example, the artist Susan Rothenberg did axes. And this is a stone carving, a lintel from Rupertus in France. To other artists, like this Chinese sculptor, a horse is not an outline at all. A horse is bulk, a solid form. So you have a harnessed horse from the Northern Wei Dynasty in China. A Japanese artist looked at a horse what he saw was beautiful lines, beautiful lines from head to tail. So this is Studies of Horses by Katsushika Hukasai. Some artists look at a horse and find color. 
So Mane Katz shows Bedouins on horseback racing. And this by Robert Polhill Beaven is a study for an Essex farm horse. Other artists are interested in shape. Oh, my beautiful horses, a Navajo pictorial blanket. And Cavallo by Marino Marini. This artist looked at a horse and saw strength. This is Horses Straining at a Load by Charles Verlat. The Edith's artist looked and they saw speed. So you have The Horse in Motion by Edward Mybridge. and the Derby at Epson by Theodore Jericho. A Spaniard named Velazquez painted horses by the dozens. He saw them as something for kings and princes to sit on while he painted them. Velazquez worked for the kings and princes. He never got any money from the horses. So this is Gaspar de Guzman, Count Duke of Olivares by Diego Velazquez. This painting is by a Frenchman named Messonnier. Horses to him were something necessary to carry generals into battle. He loved to paint generals going into battle. To him, the horse was a jeep in the days before the jeep was invented. So you have 1807 Frieden by Ernest Messonnier. On the rock walls of a cave in France nearly 22,000 years ago, someone painted this horse by the light of a fire. What did the cave artist see in a horse? We don't know. It's a mystery. What do you think? Uh, that's the Chinese horse from the Lascaux Cave. 2,000 years ago, in Greece, artists looked at horses and imagined them with wings. Pegasus was an immortal flying horse in Greek mythology. Greek artists painted horses with wings as symbols for ideas like immortality that are hard to show in pictures. Five hundred years ago in Persia, people thought a horse was for having fun, and that's what the Persian artists saw when they looked at horses. This is the game of polo, illustrated from the Book of Kings. Five hundred years ago in Italy, the artist Raphael looked at a horse, he thought that a horse was for fighting dragons on. And so he painted St. George fighting the dragon. An Italian artist painting an English picture. Of 
Of course, some artists looked at horses and wanted to paint them just as they appeared in the natural world, doing things that horses really do. We call this kind of art realistic. And so you have Two Horses in a Paddock by George Stubbs. And The Horse Fair by Rosa Bonheur. Other artists looked at horses and tried to capture them in a moment of time. We call this style of art Impressionism. Impressionist art often has a soft, slightly out of focus appearance, as in Edward Manet's At the Races. Or George Seurat's The Harnessed Horse. Then we come to what people call modern art. Some people call this crazy stuff. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. But these are paintings, drawings, and sculptures that show what certain artists imagined when they looked at a horse. So please look at them very carefully. There are lots of ways of looking at things. Maybe these pictures have something to tell you. Surrealism is a way of looking at things, including horses, that draws on, in part, an artist's dreams. Dreams can be very strange, and so can surrealist art. So you have Oscar Dominguez's Marine Rutting. And at the top, the Lost Jockey, and on the bottom, A Man with a Horse on His Head by Lucian Freud. A horse on his head? Expressionism is an art style that uses exaggerated colors and brush strokes to show the emotion an artist wants us to feel when we look at something. What do you feel when you look at these? This is Horse Team by Edvard Munch. His most famous painting is Scream. And then you have Franz Marx's Blue Horse One. You ever seen a blue horse? Cubism is a way of looking at things from different angles all at the same time. Cubists don't want to copy things the way they normally look. A famous artist named Picasso liked horses. He liked bulls, too. He drew a lot of them. And so we have two from Picasso. Horse's Head, which is part of a, a larger painting called Guernica. And then Minotaur and Horse. Abstract art can have a subject, but it doesn't need one. It uses color and shape to create a visual experience. 
These ab abstract images do have subjects, horses and riders, of course. This first one is The Life of Toussaint Louverture, number 34, by Jacob Lawrence. This artist used just a few lines and splotches of color in his woodcut. But when you look at it, you can see a galloping horse and rider, right? This is Val uh, Vasily Kandinsky's lyrical. And when a piece of art has a title, you always have to ask, why does it have that title? What do you see when you look at branches and driftwood? The artist who made this sculpture saw a horse. This is Deborah Butterfield's untitled bark. Never heard a horse bark, but she used bark. This abstract drawing in space shows what looks like a big, strong horse, but you wouldn't want to sit on its back. All it is made of is thin steel wire. Ouch. This is by a horse by Alexander Calder. looks like when you look at it straight on from the head. An American painter named Jackson Pollock found a hobby horse head and glued it onto a canvas before doing his abstract drip painting. Pollock dripped, splattered, and flung paint as a way to insert himself into his paintings. Maybe this is Pollock on a horse. The title is The Wooden Horse. So what do you think? Is this stuff crazy or is it crazy good? Looking at art and thinking about it is fun. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Museums are good places to find art. You can find art in other places too. One such place to look is in books. The horses shown below and to the right are from books illustrated by a man who never studied drawing. His name was Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss didn't ride horses, but he looked at them carefully and saw something in them. Can you guess what that something was? So look at that horse once again. A horse is many, many, many things, all depending on what you see. tried to draw your own horse. Now, the rest of this book has more information about all of the paintings that were shown and the artists who created them, the sculptures as well. Very good book.
based on Dr. Seuss's work. Parents, I highly recommend it. Thanks for listening.